Welcome to Train Signal. And guess what? You've made it to the last lesson in the Network Plus course. Congratulations. And in this lesson, what I want to do with you is I want to talk about what you might do next. Right? In other words, you've, you've gone through and you've, you've listened to me talk to you about different things and show you different things. And you're like, okay, I think I got a hold of it. But now what do I do? Where do I go from here? Well, the first thing that I recommend, and, and when I say the first thing, I'll tell you what, this is something that I hope you've maybe done a little bit already as you've gone through the course. But if you haven't, what you need to do at this point is you need to set up a network. Now, it doesn't have to be a very large network. It can be an extremely small network. Matter of fact, there's a name for a small network. Uh, we call it a SOHO network. That stands for small office or home office type network. Okay, so as you're learning, there's a really good chance you'll just have a home office that you'll set up with some kind of a network. Now, when you are setting up this network, even though it's a small network, there's still the same list of requirements and things like that that you have to go through as even if you were in an enterprise environment. So what are some of the things that we need to consider? Well, let's see. We talked about cabling, right? So you need to deal with what kinds of cables and how long do those cables need to be? And do I have the right connections? Are they terminated? Okay, you have to deal with all the cabling. Now, maybe you don't want to deal with cabling. And by the way, I recommend that you do, at least to some extent, because again, you're trying to learn here, right? But speaking of learning, besides cables, we also have to think about wireless. Okay, so the media may be cabled or it may be wireless. You'll notice how we've come full circle. Way back in the beginning of this course, we talked about how media can be either cables or wireless. Well, here we are again, rethinking that. Because every time we're going to put a network together, we have to keep that in mind. We have to think about the different types of devices that we're going to use. Do we need switches? Do we need routers? Do we need wireless equipment? What types of devices do we need? And when we're considering all this, well, what about the environment we're in? Okay, the environment I'm in here is not necessarily the same as the environment you're in there. Even in our own home office or our own little small learning environments. Remember when we talked about things like do we have brick walls maybe that we don't want to drill holes in? Or maybe you're in a house and you're trying to play there and you don't really feel like drilling holes in your drywall. Well, that's okay. That's the kind of thing you need to consider because even in the real world, you're going to run in those same environmental issues. So think about that when deciding whether you're going to use cables or wireless. And again, remember, it can also depend on the type of cable that you're going to use. Now, another environmental issue to keep in mind is if you're going to go wireless, what types of interference might we have from other equipment? Now, what about equipment as a whole, right? Talk to you about different devices, but what do you have, right? What, what equipment do you already have? Will it work for what you're trying to accomplish? What kind of budget do you have to go out and buy more equipment? That's a big one when people are trying to learn. You know, if you're just getting started in this, well, there may be a very limited budget to go out and buy expensive equipment. Or really, I should say, to not be able to go out and buy expensive equipment. Well, that's okay, because there's a lot of used stuff out there. eBay's a great thing when it comes to learning how to set up a network. So think about what your equipment limitations are. And again, remember, this is all valid to what you're going to experience in the real world as well. You get into a large corporate enterprise environment, you're going to have a budget to work with. And you're going to be put into a situation where you might need to use existing old equipment. So nothing wrong with trying to do that in your home environment when you're trying to learn this. And what about compatibility? Okay, Compatibility is another thing to really keep in mind. Now, again, with the, with the small network, well, compatibility is going to be a small issue. Right? Things will probably just work together because there won't be a whole lot of things to have to play nice. Whereas in a large enterprise, obviously, compatibility is a much greater issue. So I think you are probably getting the point here, right? The first thing I want you to do is to go out there, if you haven't done it already, and set up a network. I don't care how big or how small, but set it up. And when you're doing it, treat it like you're in a real-world corporate environment. Go through all the different requirements and make sure that you have all your bases covered, all right? Now, what else do you want to do? 
Well, if you haven't gone out and done it already, go get Network Plus certified. Even if you don't need to get certified, in other words, if maybe you're just watching this to learn some stuff, uh, maybe your employer doesn't require certification, or maybe you already have a job and so you're thinking, well, oh, Network Plus certification is no big deal, I recommend it anyway. And no, it's not because CompTIA is asking me to. They, they don't pay me anything to try to get you to go get certified. I'm saying to go do it because it's a great way to validate to yourself that you have truly grasped this information. Okay, and when you're trying to get certified, I will tell you that, well, the stuff we just talked about, practicing setting up a network will come in real handy. And then the Trans Center practice exams will also come in very handy. So I, I really recommend that you do that. Now from there, if you have already accomplished Network Plus and you're thinking certification is something that means a lot to me, I just don't know what to do next. Well, there's a few things I can recommend. And there is no one correct answer to this. Okay, the first thing is A+. Now, a lot of people consider A+, to be a certification you get before Network Plus. But that's okay. If you haven't done it yet, it's a great certification to go get even after Network Plus. Security Plus is another one. We talked a lot about security in this course, and Security Plus is another CompTIA certification which really can take you down that network administrator or even network engineer path. Now from there, I would recommend beginning the process of looking into specific vendors. Okay, CompTIA is vendor independent. Even though you may have heard me make a lot of mentions of Microsoft throughout the course, and that's because I primarily tend to be a Microsoft guy, and Microsoft is a major player within the CompTIA realm. The reality is there's many other companies out there, and you may want to look into what kind of a direction you want to take your networking abilities. Do you want to be a Microsoft administrator? Maybe you want to be a Cisco administrator. Okay, It doesn't matter what vendor you pick. Go pick one, and each of those vendors will also have certification paths that you can take, as well as learning paths that you can take. All right, so again, that you know, is pretty much all I have for you. I, I appreciate you hanging out and, and, and listening to me and, and having me show you all this stuff as we went through the Network Plus course, okay? But that's pretty much it. And so I wish you all the luck in the world in all of your networking adventures. And because that is the end of this lesson, you know what I have to wrap things up with, right? I'll see you in the next course.